Hello and welcome to the week ahead from the Financial Times in London. Here's what we'll be watching in the next few days. Mario Draghi completes five years as president of the European Central Bank. The Bank of Japan holds its monetary policy meeting in Tokyo. And it's a big week for oil majors as Shell and BP both report results. But first to Frankfurt, where Mario Draghi this week marks his fifth anniversary at the helm of the ECB. If he serves his full term at the bank, Mr Draghi will remain in Frankfurt until 2019. But now past the halfway mark, how has he handled the job so far? Well, before the crash, the normal way to assess how successful his term has been would have been to look at inflation. But Mr Draghi's time in charge has been anything but normal, as our Frankfurt Bureau Chief Claire Jones explains. In a word, those five years have been eventful. He's not only had to grapple a sovereign debt crisis, and a very significant economic crisis, but he's also had to deal with very, very low inflation. Now, inflation is usually the measure that we use to judge the success of central banks, and on that score, he hasn't done so well. The ECB is still really undershooting its inflation target of 2%, and he'll be disappointed in that. However, his statement that he would do whatever it takes to save the Eurozone did really stabilise a currency area which at one point looked in danger of collapse. By saying he'll do whatever it takes to save the Eurozone from collapse, Mr Draghi is credited with preventing a run on the bonds of the region's weakest members. The true measure of Mr Draghi's success could be whether that remains the case by the time he leaves Frankfurt. Next to Tokyo, where the Bank of Japan holds its monetary policy meeting on Tuesday. The BOJ made some big moves at its September meeting, capping the 10-year yield at 0% and promising to overshoot its 2% inflation target. But since then, economic news for Japan has been broadly positive and business confidence has been strong. So the bank has very little incentive to act this month and is likely to stay on hold as it awaits further economic developments. Here's our Tokyo Bureau Chief Robin Harding on what to look out for this week's meeting. Two things. One, their inflation outlook. Will the BOJ postpone the date for achieving 2% inflation beyond 2018, which is the end of Governor Habihiko Kuroda's term? Second, how are they going to operate their new yield cap? Markets are very interested in what happens if a 10-year bond yield falls well below 0%. Mr Kuroda is likely to be asked about that in his press conference. One possibility is the Bank of Japan responds by cutting its asset purchases from the current 80 trillion yen a year. Markets might interpret such a move as a taper of quantitative easing, and Mr Kuroda is likely to be pressed on this point. And finally, to earnings season for the oil majors. Both Shell and BP are reporting third quarter results this week at a time of renewed optimism in the oil market. The price of crude has been back above $50 a barrel recently, in part thanks to OPEC taking action to curb production and support prices. The problem is these third quarter results don't reflect the market right now, but instead a period over the summer when prices were below $50 a barrel, a level where none of the producers can make money and something which will be reflected in these results. Our energy editor Andrew Ward has more. The problem at Shell is that, like all the other majors, they've suffered from the downturn in oil prices. But at the same time, during this downturn, they've gone ahead with a £35 billion uh, acquisition of BG Group, the only mega merger of recent years. So they have taken a lot of debt. Their debt has more than doubled in the past year. Um, so the fiscal strain on this company is greater than all the other companies. So they're desperately trying to shed assets uh, to raise cash to cover their dividend. So there'll be a lot of scrutiny on Shell's performance this week. Um, BP, you know, they have spent the past several years in the shadow of the Deepwater Horizon disaster in the Gulf of Mexico. They've drawn a line under that now, they say. They've declared a final bill, $62 billion. Um, that, they hope, gives them the ability to move beyond that um, and start to become a, a more normal company again. And that's what the week ahead looks like from the Financial Times in London. See you again next time.